Salute family. Take Commander Zulu back at you once again in the real man movement, supporting real woman wisdom. And today I have one of my good friends, my frat brothers, one of my Masonic frat brothers right here. We go way back. And um, we call him Witty Wit. My brother Wit, man. I'm going I'm to let him go ahead and introduce himself. This is a real good brother. We've been knowing each other for man a long time. Go back to 94. 94? Was it yeah, I think 95, maybe 95. Oh, 94. No. Yeah. Wasn't it? Well, well shoot, we'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hey, man. Uh, for a long, long. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm yes. A very sir. good, good man. That's a real man. Uh, educated. Uh, understands, understands communities, urban community living. Understand uh, brothers and sisters who may be coming up young and coming up under brokenness. We have uh, familiarity with those things and with those type of people. So, uh, once again, my brother Witty Wit, what's happening, brother? Go ahead hey, and how you do? So. Hey, formal uh, government is, is uh, Chris Whitfield, but uh, people just call me Wit for short. That's something you pick up when you're in the military. That's right. And uh, funny story is my dad was in the army, so I'm an army brat. And yeah. um, uh, show you the influence he had on me. Everyone used to call him Wit, and they would call me by my first name, Chris. And when I was a kid, right. it would frustrate me. That they wouldn't, they wouldn't give me the same respect that they would give him, and call me wit. Right. Yeah. So, so it was, you know, it was just something I always wanted. So when I went into the military, people was calling me wit. It kind of gave me some validation. Like, man, I'm on the same. Yeah, wit. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Progressing towards the same level as my dad. But I did. Uh, it was uh just dudes. My nickname was just dude. It's a whole nother fraternity stuff. That's a fraternity that's joke right. for my for, for the frat brothers out there and brothers and sisters. Man. That's right. That's right. That's, that's for them wages. But, but, uh... man. <laughs> but brother, thank you for coming on with me, man. I've been wanting to get with you for a while, man. And yes, sir. To, um, uh, much success with your move. You relocated recently from what you told me, and um, hoping that, that things go well with that re relocation process. Yes, sir. Man, I wanted to talk to you about a situation. And when I when I when I saw it, you was the first person I thought of for some reason, man. Because see, back in the day, see, tank commander wasn't always a tank commander. Like, like, no, like sir. I was the tank commander for real. Yes, sir. And we used to, you know, back in the days, we used to party, we went kind of hard. And some of the music we use, we, we all we're both from the hip hop, hip hop culture. So we appreciate hip hop. Mm -hmm. Not that you got that, that you in a daze or spellbound by it but we appreciate the concept of hip-hop rap music and looking at it as an art form because that's yes, what it is are there some things that possibly need to be adjusted in it in the understanding of that art form today yes possibly so and that's what this real man movement is all about us keeping it real we don't talk above you we don't talk beneath you both of us have degrees and all of that stuff, but that don't mean nothing when it comes to being real. Yeah. So there was a situation I was looking at. You know, a group me and him used to always listen to. We always listen to was the Ghetto Boys. That's right. Ghetto Boys, Ghetto Boys. Uh, uh. I mean, big, we were big fans of the Ghetto Boys, and I still appreciate the music and the art that they did uh, produce to society because that's a, that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. There's a show. And two of the members are still alive. Uh, and the two members we're talking about right now are the world world renowned Scarface, Brad Jordan. And then there's Great, Willie D. Greatest MC to ever come out the South. You Brad, right? Brad. Yeah, Brad, yes, yes. I Brad was the greatest ever. Not only the South, actually, to me. Now we're gonna get into that though. But okay, we get yeah, that's a whole nother. It was when I when I saw I was looking at the podcast they had. Right, but let me get back to what I was saying for some people who may not know the Ghetto Boys, right? The Ghetto Boys, I think, started off, they had different people in the group at different times. But when they were at the height of their career, it was uh, Scarface, it was Willie D, and Bushwick Bill. Rest in peace. Yeah, those were the Rest in power. Three. They had other people that came in, like Big Mike came in from New Orleans. Yeah. Homie, Big Mike came in for, for, yeah. for a while. Then he, le then, he, then he left. Willie D left the group. Okay. Uh, -huh. uh the, the two that um the one that was really to me holding it was Scarface. Until, Always until he did his own solo thing. But anyway, uh -huh. that was the that is pretty much the makeup of the group of the group. And the two who, who are living the day still existed today representing the brand, the ghetto boys brand, are 
Brad Jordan and Willie D. That's Scarface and Willie D. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm looking at it. I don't look at it as often as I possibly should, but I like the group, so I'm a subscribe member to it. So Willie D, Scarface, y'all see the Tank Commander, holler at your boy. Holler at your boy, because I listen no to doubt. music. <laughs> but no yeah, doubt. But anyways, I was looking at it, and it just so happened to be Willie D had Scarface on there, and it kind of like he blindsided him with something, right? And what the situation was concerning was, I, I believe Scarface, which when you hear me say Brad, that's that's who Scarface that's Face Mob. Right. Scarface was invited to the Grammys, was called, invited to the Grammys to perform a song. And this was doing the portion. I think they were they were uh commemorating 50 years of hip hop. That's right. Is that right? It that's was right. Years of hip hop. So it was a small commemoration concerning hip hop, but but Scarface, Brad Jordan, was called to represent the Ghetto Boys brand, which he did. And I, you know, I didn't see a slight of anything. But now apparently Willie D felt differently about it. As I listened to the podcast, right, Willie D, he kind of ambushed Scarface on it. And I don't believe Scarface, Scarface knew he was going to be, was going to come at him this way. Right. The way that he came at him was that he was offended that Scarface was invited and he was not invited. That at the end of the day, that's pretty much what it what it what it kind of came down to. And it kind of took Scarface by surprise, but that, this is a live show going on. So he's he's holding back his emotions. He's trying not to cause an argument with Willie D, but Willie D is being real aggressive and he really feel he feel played to me for some reason. And so when he brings it to Scarface, Scarface like I'm not I mean he didn't see this. He didn't feel the same way. Mm -hmm. I would go and encourage anyone to go look at the podcast. All you got it's uh Ghetto Boys podcast. And Reloaded. You, yeah, Ghetto Boys Reloaded, and you'll see the episode between Willie D and Scarface concerning the Grammys. So them two had mm -hmm. a beef. They, in other words, it was a beef. I'm yes. not sure that Scarface even knew that it was going to turn into a beef. I'm not sure now, but the way Willie D was coming at him, bro. He was trying to make it seem as though, sit that right there, son. He was trying to make it seem as though, uh, in my opinion, as, as a viewer, as though like Scarface was trying to leave him out and that all this attention goes to Scarface and he doesn't get much attention. And then at the time he tried to throw out their solo careers, which I, I mean, Willie D brother, you know, he, <laughs> he's not even close comparison, brother when they talk about the solo careers of Scarface and Willie D. But he was trying to throw, look, I did this, I did that. And I understand it was a group effort, but I don't think, I don't believe Scarface did anything intentionally to make himself look bigger than the group. The truth of it is, is that Scarface solo career did make him bigger than the group. I mean, and that's just facts to me. So I felt, now this is what me and you gonna get into it. Cause I felt that Willie D was on some hater stuff, and it, 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 and I like Willie D, but it's just the way you don't you don't ambush a friend like that live. You don't he don't he's not he don't even know you're going there, and possibly didn't even know you had the beef, because the Grammys was done days before the show. So to me, <clears throat> excuse me, it would have been more like that's like me and you. I'd be like, man, whip, bro. You got that call, and me and you done done business and stuff before, with, you know, and everything. And you know how we ride. We ride. We ride together. You, you know, I call you and say, "Hey, man, you know, bro, you you went and did that show. You didn't even let me know what's going on." Woo, woo, woo. To me, that would be something like, "Why would I do that?" And this man has his own solo career that is also attached to the Ghetto's Boys brand. So that means whatever that whatever. Brad Jordan does, Scarface does, he's really uplifting the ghetto boy brand along with his own. Uh, that's how I felt about it, brother. So when I looked at when I looked at it, I said, let me, you know, this is a this is a great conversation for people to have. And you know I'm big on loyalty, brother. You know me, we right. got loyalty. So I want to talk to you about this, my man. Somebody I know, I know the character of the person that you a real man. Yeah. What do you think about that? Did you see it for one? And what was your opinion about it, brother? I don't know how many episodes it was, but the first 
initial episode. I don't know if it went. It was only one. Then I saw that. I saw that one. I thought that they both were right. Okay. Um, because I don't have the background information as to whether there was a conversation before the taping of the episode on, hey, I'm going to hit you with this, or if it was just out of nowhere. But face is face. But the ghetto boys, if we're talking about 50 years of hip hop, and, you know, for the South, the ghetto boys laid that foundation. They were part of the foundation of Southern hip hop. So I don't necessarily, I think, even though I feel like Scarface is the greatest MC to ever come out of the South, the standard bearer, I don't necessarily feel like he's bigger than the ghetto boys, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? As far as the brand, you know, as far as what they mean to the South, I don't feel like he's bigger than the ghetto boys. Uh, right. Take nothing away from him. Sure. Sure. Yeah, but I would have liked to have seen the Ghetto Boys represented, you know what I'm saying, when we celebrate 50 years of hip-hop. I agree. But let, let me say this, because I want to challenge that thought process right there. Are you saying that Ghetto Boys collectively turned out to be a bigger brand than Scarface independently? Because th th let me give you a little something else to think about with that. When it come up to these accolades about the best lyricists, Scarface's name is always in. I'm talking, yeah. about, he's always in that conversation. Now, if you're part of the Ghetto Boys, you know, you're known for being part of the Ghetto Boys. The Ghetto Boys' last song that really made any noise was when? Be honest about it. I mean, can you think about it? Uh, but when it comes I... to Brad, here's the thing about Scarface, man, and I'm going to also. Add on to what you said, one of the greatest rappers, lyricists coming out of the South, I think one of the greatest lyricists, period. Yes. And and, and that's what the, the argument, not the argument, but the conversation among people who really love hip hop and love rap music, because we were into the lyric side. The lyrical, right. the lyrical side let us know who was handling things. Right. Scarface was not only lyrical, not with the catchy lyrics, but he was deep. Deep, told stories. He was deep. he was psychologically deep. Man. Yeah, it made, yeah. It'll make you think like, wow. I can never remember not one song Willie D did. I'm not making fun. I'm, I'm saying that would that that would make me say, wow. Look at this, this. He's a great lyricist, and it's not. I don't want this to seem like I'm gunslinging on Willie D. Nah, never. Man, never. What he did on that podcast was wrong because he tried to make Scarface feel guilty for something. And at the same time, he tried to say, well, you're he, by saying you're no better than me. We're, we're, we're on the same level. And that's right. as far as they might be as, as men. Yes. But far as accomplishments. No, no. I just can't. I can't. I can't swallow that. I can't. I can't. I can't allow Willie D to say that because I name five good songs Willie D made. On the song. I'm not. <laughs> let me say this. I'm not touching that. I'm not because I don't, I don't. I can't think of. You know, Willie D, I don't know how many solo albums he had. I never really went I mean, into his catalog. He had a point, yeah. but all, none of them, none yeah. of me, and that, I don't want I don't want it to seem this way, bro. But I I'm, just rock with Willie D. They blunt, I'm blunt too. You know, we I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. not I'm gonna call it like I see it. Yeah. Uh but I can understand this part <clears throat> from Willie D. First, first of all, I don't think Scarface did anything wrong or intentionally wrong. To hurt the brand, he didn't hurt the brand, or right. he didn't say, "I'm I'm the man of the brand." Yeah. This is what Willie D is saying. Scarface ain't never said. Yeah, but I, I really hate it because he came off like a bully, and I don't like bullies. You know, I don't like bullies. I don't think so, man. I think that uh, I mean, I think Brad, I think I think Face held his own, kept his composure, and I I I kind of give him both props to. You know, this is actually what kind of made me uncomfortable about it was that it would be like me and you having a conversation right. in public that we probably should, that we should have had that's in what private. I'm yeah, that, yeah, that's the only thing. So it was kind of just like, but in reality, for, for someone who wouldn't know us, who would see that, would be uncomfortable to watch that maybe. Right. But we would be comfortable in the conversation. We've had hundreds of conversations like that. And we've had some real disagreements, but we just worked it out as as uh as brothers you know what i'm saying we right. worked it out as brothers man and, and and you know you're older than me and you've always served as a bigger as an older brother 
And, you know, you've checked me a couple of times. Yeah, you know we, what I'm saying? That's how we did, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've had I've had to, you know, so-called come at you, check you a couple of times as well. But you've checked me. I was a younger man than you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. You may be about four years older than me. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, I, but you were, that's a lot to a man in, mm -hmm. in your 20s. 26 to 22 is a lot of, a lot of growing. A lot of growth has taken place. And um, I, I say that to say that it was just, Two brothers having a, a disagreement in front of everybody. Right. And see, that's it, what, that I mean, we and, and look, you're thinking about our lifestyle, because our lifestyles are almost similar. The, yes. You know, we had to wrap stuff in there as well. You know, we had the the, the keep at it was the time of the when my brother was was involved with the keep moving records. Remember that? Right. In New Orleans. Right. So right. same type of people we we we've met, we've been around those those kind of people. Right. Yes. And the character of people, like when people were around us, we we were the, we came in the place. We we were the life of the party. Right. We didn't follow nobody. We didn't let nobody else take. It. I don't care if he was a superstar or not. We didn't allow them to take the attention. We we right. we gone at that. You know. Right. 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 We're here. <laughs> right. And so when we had internal rifts, it, sometimes we had to go and get it in. With, you know what I'm saying? You know that we get we get it in. Yeah. That we be get the you know, all right. This is what it is. Yeah, yeah. We good now. We can move on. That's a, that's just a true way of men living to me. Yeah. I, I don't want people. I don't want you young brothers or, or, or sisters to understand that it's all about fighting. And that. That's not what it was about. It was about figuring out your your problems with one another. Yeah. And no matter, even if you had to scuffle or tussle, or almost get into a scuffle or tussle, mm. you get. Yeah. In other words, you don't treat no man unmanly. Yes. Yeah. It was all about. Anytime yeah. you felt your manhood was being violated, you had to stand on business. We never allowed that. And right. if we were around, we wouldn't allow nobody to violate your, your manhood. We would, hey man, I don't let him do that. Yeah. yeah. So, so I felt that just like you said, man, that would have been a conversation. If that was me and you, we would have had it. We probably would have argued, cussed each other out for a minute for whatever, but there's yeah. no way that would have damaged our relationship. No, nah, no. Nah. Right. Nah, nah. And I, me knowing you, me knowing you, I know if you was Willie D, if I was facing you, I, showing up, I know that that's what we would have had to talk about. Yeah. Like me just knowing you, it's no way. <laughs> that, that Zulu was, it, but at the same time, yeah. I don't think, you know, and I feel this is where I feel Willie D at. If we're a group now, we move and we operate as one organism, meaning that if we're in a group, you may be a little bit more, you may be a better lyricist than me. Yeah. We know that coming in. Yeah. Record sales don't tell us that. We know that who, who's the best. We know yeah. who's better than who. Yeah. So you got to think when I, all that may have been going on a long time because Willie D did say, man, we didn't had arguments, you know, before. You guys been together since what, 86? Yeah. But here's yeah. the question. You don't publicly call that man a selfish, a selfish bastard. You don't call a man like that in front of other people. See, here's the thing. This is where it would have got right with me and we, we'd have to get that right. Because you go sit here and ambush me on the show, bro. And now you calling me a selfish bastard in front of all these people? Brother, if yeah. you feel that way, you should have, we could have handled this a long time ago. Or possibly if you still feel that way, we don't need to be on the show together like that. But I, I don't I don't know if this is why I come in. I, this is why I say I don't know if the conversation was held before because space could have easily said, hey, man, we're going to put this one on the editor room floor. That yeah. part where you calling me a selfish bastard, you got to you, we got to cut that out. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It may have been a conversation that happened before. It's like we're going to address this and we're going to get the people that conversation may have had. They they may have had that conversation, yeah. and we're gonna give these people what the conversation we actually had. We just gonna do it on front street. So you think it was a stage conversation? I don't think it was staged no, because what you're saying is it would have to be partially staged because the true raw emotions wouldn't be there because we've already talked about it. Did it seem like it was some raw emotions there? I think so. you know, really, brother. When I look at you know, we both in psychology. You psychology too, right? No, no, no. Okay. No, I'm, I'm special. Uh, my degree's in uh, special education. Education, yeah, that's what yeah. it was. But either way, when I look at his body language, he's really like, I can't believe, you know, he kind of liked this the whole time. And he kind of like, he can't believe that to me, I'm getting this is, and I, I really pay attention to the body language of people. 
Uh -huh. Because what your mouth won't say, your eyes going to say and your body going to say. It. Right. You know, so as I'm looking at Scarface, he's leaning he, and he's like, and he's taking these, this, 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 to me, which seems like verbal jabs and hooks from Willie. Willie getting his his opinion out about how he feels. And Scarface just don't feel he should feel that way because he don't feel he did anything wrong. In That's other right. words, if it went on, it was all about the brand. Right? Yeah. yeah. If it's all about, let's say me, me and you both on the square. If we, if ever birth, if, whatever business we were taking about, if it was all about that, that's something different. That's no individualism in that. Mm -hmm. That's brotherhood. Mm -hmm. if, if Willie D looking at the ghetto boys, uh, the ghetto boys, all everything they did, they put in to build that brand. If he's looking at it that way, then I can understand. Or was it ever? But then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. I mean, you gotta call right, right, wrong, wrong. Why you left the group? Who left the group? Willie. Remember Willie D left the group. Oh, wasn't it about some money or something? No, it's, it's, it's... I don't, but I'm saying you're not too much about the brand if you left if you left the damn brand. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is kind of man. Thirty me. You know, 30, 30 years or, or no way of explaining that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just think that um, I feel like Face was confident in his decision, and it's no need to elevate. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't see where he felt a need to over-explain a decision that he was confident in making. You know, and Willie D was standing on what he was standing on about the brand. You know, and I think that's why I say I think they're both right. right. I would have loved to have seen the Ghetto Boy, but honestly, it was up to the committee. You know, the people who put that show together. How don't y'all know what the Ghetto Boys mean to the South? Yeah, well, but then, then but how don't y'all know? Because it, it, it ain't. You know, back then it was it was Luke, and then it was Rap a Lot. That that's who that was the from what I remember as a as a kid. That's where the Southern, you know what I'm saying, groundswell came was from from Houston and from Miami. How don't y'all know what the Ghetto Boys mean to hip hop? Right. And, yes. And I don't think that they were looking at it that way because I think that when they say hip, when you say hip hop. The general public, not 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 people like ourselves. The general public think East Coast. I'm but, not from the East Coast, though. Yeah, no, but I'm saying the general public, like you know, you got more people in that area than down. In but you went and got face, huh? But but why'd you go get face? Yeah, why'd but, you go get Scarface? For right, the, for the... because when you think of the South, who else would you think of though? Independently, lyrically Luke? from the South, Lil Wayne, now, of course. But I mean, that's that's. That's yeah. That's not fifty years ago. That's not right, 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 back right. In, the, in the gut, you know. Right, you right, know, right. Past what he did, it was around. You know, it was coming up. But not in eighty six. I think the Ghetto Boys came about eighty six, eighty seven. Man, eighty six. I mean, Cash Money was moving around because I'm from New Orleans. You know, I mean, they were building. Yeah, but we Master P. You uh -huh. know, people didn't know him as that then, but just people we see in the you know. In the hood, you from New Orleans though. Projects and stuff. So we, yeah. if we in the third ward or something like that. I'm moving around. I mean, from the ninth ward, we used to always do that. We used to infiltrate wards. That's yeah, what we called it back then. Like we go uh -huh. go right this Saturday night. What we gonna do? We couldn't find a house party because we we drive around looking for house parties. When we go infiltrate a ward. Yeah, that just was, you know, that was on what we was on back then. But that's yeah, what yeah. Know. But I I think Face Man, the Ghetto Boys, the first group I remember out the South Loop. The ghetto boys, you know what I'm saying? And and I, so, yeah. And, 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 and Scarface was something different. He, another another creature. A whole I mean, look, listen to this. In my on my workout, uh the music I listened to. How many songs from Willie D you got on there? Just himself. Zero. How many songs you got from Scarface? Name it. His whole his last album, Deeply Rooted. Hold I, I Deeply Rooted was a, a that's a classic, man. It's a classic. And it's recently. Yeah, that's like 2015 or something Miracle like that. Exorcism? Yeah. That's hey, man, the last album I bought. Can talk to you lyric. Barely ain't got, he got some old animal shelter music in the background. <laughs> and still can rock. Um, and still lyrically just tear yeah. that thing up? Yeah, man. But, yeah. But, yeah, Face, one of, one of the, the greatest lyricists in my opinion. Yes. Um, so I want to drive your attention back to this. So when Willie D made the comparison with the with the careers. The where you think that's coming from? Is that coming from a place of 
Where I don't rem I didn't see I don't remember that in the video. Go back and look at it. Okay. When you get okay. But he did. In uh -huh. other words, he was trying to to me it made it seemed like he was looking, but you know, maybe he looked at face as being an arrogant person. I don't know the dude. He might be. I'm just speaking from what we know publicly. Because yeah. anytime you're a public figure and you make money from the public and you put your business out to the public, then the public got a right to an opinion. Yeah. It'd be something if I kept it private. Uh-huh. Or we kept if we kept it like we we didn't have stuff, stuff we didn't we don't need to talk. We kept it private, we got through it. Yeah. It's just to talk yeah. about it no more. But if we yeah. if we had never did that, then some people who have these emotions like that, like I'm not getting recognized. Because that's just how I felt he was coming. He was like, man, I'm not getting recognized. It felt like he was being he was crying. Why not? I thought he was speaking more to the ghetto boys not being recognized. He's only the ghetto, ghetto boys left. The ghetto boys are worthy of recognition. If we talking 50 years of hip hop, yes. You you gotta talk about the ghetto boys. No doubt. You can't separate. You can't, separate. You can't look, you... look at this. So if you go, he the man went and represented the he represented the ghetto boys wonderfully. But now if Willie D go say, well, why I didn't get a call, Brad? You should have you should have handled it this way. What about Big Mike? <laughs> Big Mike was part of him. It was one movie. album, though. Yeah. So well, you ain't going to call Big Mike. He's still living? Man over there starving. So you're going to tell me the ghetto boy's brand is supposed to be that good? You want people to look out for you, Willie? You ain't look. Y'all ain't looking out for Big Mike? There's people I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why are you crying on that tip? It was other people like Reddy Red. Remember Reddy Red? Yeah. They were, he was part of the ghetto boys. He was part of the ghetto boys. So y'all, I mean, even if he's not here any longer, I'm pretty sure he have descendants that would gladly accept the recognition of what their loved one did. That's why I would have liked to see the two active ghetto boy members, yeah, represented on that stage. But Big Mike, you is know, what you mean active? What does active mean? Because Big Mike isn't in the group anymore. Yeah, but is, there is no group anymore. Right. If, right. if if they did a show, you think? A ghetto boy show. Do you think Big Mike is showing up? No, what I'm saying. Well, well, well. Make it shit. Why not? He's what? for whatever reason he's not with yeah, the group. But no I'm saying though, it's the for whatever reason that we don't know. That's what. <laughs> yes, right. That sounds like internal. That's a discussion, piece, man. But you know, <laughs> when you're talking to real men about a situation. Yeah. We, we we this is a this is not an unfamiliar situation between for us. We've seen no. it with people too. To where yeah. we might have had friends that got, I mean, I can name some stuff where, you know, they want to know what we're talking about. But yeah. it was similar situations. And at the end of the day, it always be somebody felt slighted. It's Fact. always, I mean, I, I can't think of a situation like that with where but you always, unless you, you can't, everybody can't go. Right. You feel right. Me? Everybody can't go on the ride. This right. time they call face, you know, face accepted. You know, Face made a, a decision to not include, to not say, you know what, if I can't bring my brother with me, then right. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just a decision that he made. He got to live with that decision. Yeah. They got to live with the, the ramifications of that, whether it caused a, you know, a, a, a further beef or whether it's just something that they, it's just a slight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just a slight bump in the road. They right. got to work that out amongst themselves, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to really get, I know they brothers. And I don't want to really get in the middle of. Yeah, but but th th this is what I say, with Like I say, when you make your business public, it's public. You open it up for scrutiny. Yeah. So, so, you, you know, I don't, I don't want, I don't want anyone to look at. But here's what, here's where the caveat, here's where the, uh, here, here's where the million dollar worth of game is at, right? When you look at a situation like this, can you identify jealousy or just miscommunication? That's what I'm getting. Mis to. Miscommunication. If it's miscommunication, then as a man, this is what I feel obligated to do, and I've had to do it. This might be a miscommunication, but I found that well, I, what it really was. This is a personal issue. This is when I was serving as the eminent commander mm -hmm. of the house. So in the situation, I, I, I confront the situation because I it might just be some, you know, just some talk. I'm here in third and fourth party, right? So you know me. And I was on one of my days at that time. I confronted it head up. <clears throat> now, whether the person was scared and just was scared, 
I don't know. But it turned out to be exactly what I thought it was. It was jealousy. I didn't want it to be. Mm -hmm. Boy, you sometimes you don't want it to be a person that you're dealing with. You don't want jealousy to rear its ugly head. But see, jealousy is something that you don't just see it. You feel it. Yes. You smell it. So you don't think Scarface was feeling that. Look at no. that had a degree to me of jealousy. I'm I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, and I know the brothers will. These are two, they, they're wealthy enough to be able to get through it. Nobody uh life was threatened or no. like that. They're older now. My thing is that when do you, I mean, you're not in your 20s to be riffing about something like that, bro. I think I think that Willie just felt like it was a conversation that needed to be had. They had the conversation. And I think that, that that was the end of it. Yeah. You know. But, I mean, but now, how would it have been if, if Scarface would have said on the show, because they both called each other selfish. After, uh -huh. after Willie D called himself, he said, oh, no, Willie, you don't want selfish. That, listen, to the, listen, listen to the language. I'm calling you selfish. No, man, you don't want selfish. You talking about, now, what that sound like? Sound I mean, like they didn't have, they didn't have that discussion before. Yeah. This is something that they... The, the that they called each other before. Been doing for a while, and, and, and what, what the, I guess the point we're trying to drive home to the viewers are, are brothers that might be involved in a situation like this. You know, it's like I say, body language means a lot because what a person won't say for whatever the reasons may be, with their mouth, their eyes and their body can't help it. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. me, I was just seeing like, I can't. I mean, um, Scarface, like I can't believe he's going here. But in Willie D, his body language was more like I'm about to let him have it. To me. And okay. where did that come from? I'm pretty sure it came from a history that's been played with situations about who's better than who. I'm leaving the group because they y'all paying too much attention to one. That you know what I'm saying? I'm looking a little deeper into this thing. I just so, see it. <laughs> now once the ghetto boys kind of dissolve. Scarface just takes off on his own and does. Right. Real, I'm talking about, I can name some. I'm talking about these are. Early I mean, a stellar, stellar career, man. St stellar yeah. career. About that. Make, bro, when I, I remember time, listen, bro, and, and, and I keep it, you know, I'm, I'm harder than anybody out there, just as hard. Scarface had me crying, boy, you ain't living right. You were yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. going through something, <laughs> back then, was going through some things, man. Just the psychological perspective that Scarface rap on, that I think, especially many people in the urban environment, in urban communities, black men and women, we deal with a different type of stress. Mm -hmm. White stress is, is different than black stress. And, and that's that's not saying nothing racist. That's, that's, that's another conversation, but I'm talking about the stresses of dealing with a society that's not including you for one. And no matter how hard you go out there and work and sweat, to get in position still doesn't acknowledge you fully. That's mm -hmm. what I understand from Willie D. So his anger shouldn't just be, it's not just that Scarface. It's more at the system. And that's what he said. I don't give a damn about the Grammys anyway. Didn't he say that? I don't care. So if you don't care about it, nothing, nothing that go on over there should hurt you. It's yeah. not It's not the Grammys that hurt hurting him. It's that I could imagine he wants Scarface to understand like he's understanding. And that's why I, say, I think Willie D, Willie D is thinking deeper about it than what Scarface is. So, I, and that's why I don't want to just call Willie bad. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm saying what I see. <laughs> that's all I saw. Yeah, so, and I just see it. I see it different. Yeah, and you see it differently, right? I so, just see it. I just see it as a conversation between two brothers, and it just kind of remind me of you and your brother. I've seen y'all had them heated discussions, right? Yeah. And we we barbecuing two hours later. Right, yeah, show now. Like we we literally having a cookout, like right. Because I don't I don't have a biological brother, so when I see y'all's interaction, sometimes it be two alpha males right. having a disagreement. Yeah, but yeah. it's brothers, and that's right. how I saw that conversation. Just oh, we didn't got to get out the grass and talk. You know, when we had to do our thing a couple times. You know that, but it's just <laughs> that's just how we was raised, though. Nah, you know, I, yeah. love, my brother, I love my brother. You know, you know yeah. how that go. But coming up, you know, I can get and people, man. And, and then when you have two mentalities that are that are alpha, uh, one thing alphas know, people know, learn about each other. Brothers learn about each other. 
you know when the BS about to start. Yeah. So <laughs> you know when yeah. it's about to start, man. I can look at you a tail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so for me, I know that. I knew that yeah. about my brother. And some people that, that know each other, they know that about each other. But never fall out to the point to where you trying to kill your brother. Or you no. trying to uh you trying to wish harm on them, or you don't want them to be successful. And I think yeah. that from what I saw with between Willie D and um Scarface, that's the, the their their relationship is more like siblings than people that each other and, and made music together and made made they are iconic. Yeah. The ghetto boys, Willie D, uh Scarface, Bushwick Bill. Big Mike, all those the ghetto boys himself are always gonna be an icon. The, the, the brand is the brand is iconic. Kind of group, man. One of one of the best groups now. That's different. See, groups is different than solo individual. See, yeah. you know, collectively as a group, they in my top tier, of course. They right up there with NWA. Yeah. You know, yes. I like them a little better than NWA, you know, personally, because I'm from the South. I'm always side with the South, you know. <laughs> but you know you're going to some dangerous territory you dangerous, want me to <laughs> dangerous territory. you go to some deep waters right now man <laughs> but it is what it is so bad but you know I, I i really applaud the brothers uh, once again for being able to have that conversation i just hope it didn't damage anything i would also yeah. hope that willie d would not feel slighted that 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 wasn't that that right. was all on him because one thing Scarface did say, another thing he said was that, Willie, they called me. I don't... Yes, that's what I was saying. That's dealing with his solo career. Because Willie D has a solo career, too. He has his own people that manage his career as well. They didn't but get it. Yeah. So if I'm calling, the Grammys calling, are they calling for Scarface? Or his, based off his independent career? And that he was a part of the Ghetto Boys as well, even though they're recognizing the Ghetto Boys. Why you didn't call Willie D? Or was Willie D not as influential in their minds? Not, not, in, not that their minds even know what is, what is, what is influential or not. But to us, you know, it's a different situation. Right. But to them, they probably didn't see fit see the reason to call Willie D when Willie D just doesn't. Yeah, because I mean, how many times? How many times has the Grammy got it right about hip hop? When it comes to hip hop, the Grammys they never, barely gets it right. They never, they never get it right. So, yeah, so you know, you you they somebody dropped the ball and didn't contact both of them. That's how I saw it. Yeah. Okay, I agree with that because I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. It was dropped in that area. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah. But now, when the ball the ball wasn't dropped to me, when when he got the call, and congratulate when, your brother because he could have easily said, "Look, I just want to do." my solo career i want the ghetto boy because he you see what stuff what i was looking at on that podcast man y'all need to go watch this man it's deeper than rap is what i'm getting to what uh willie d was kind of saying to me looked like he was saying okay this music that we made together it deserves the notoriety pluralistically of the of the artists mm -hmm. pluralistic notoriety but now when you both mm -hmm. stole careers and one career just goes up like that, it's going to be hard not to say, okay, well, hey, brother, I don't know if they was calling me when I got the call for my career or for the Ghetto Boys brand, but I'm going to uplift both of them anyway, which I feel I feel Scarface wound up doing. Now, Willie D was on him about, why did you go in there and sing a Ghetto Boys song instead of, it was just, man, it was just too nit. Man, it's like, you know, it's just too nitpicky. Yeah. You don't, yeah. You don't, you don't see that? Yeah. And, and who's to say he got to choose that song? Yeah, they could have just said, man, we got to have that first verse. No, until I got it. But it's the Grammys, brother. You know the Grammys are going to mess it up. Right. And see, that's why I don't put stuff like hip-hop. Hip-hop is too valuable to, to black culture. Not only black culture, but, uh -huh. to many, you know, it's transcended all cultures. I mean, hip-hop has done that. It's too... Yeah. It, it's too... Uh, too strong and it's too uh deeply rooted like Scarface album to put into a 50 minute segment 20 minute segment or whatever it was a short segment from what I, I don't watch the grammy it was short man 
that's not that's kind of yeah. disrespectful to hip hop in its totality. So you know these 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 people here who are entertainers, who are who are part of big groups or have large solo careers, it's up to them collectively to represent hip hop. You don't give people like the Grammys, you don't give them the uh, authority mm -hmm. to represent your work what they don't understand fully. So I don't think yeah. saying that the Grammys messed up, they always mess up. They don't understand this. They always tricking it up, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. I I, was, I agree. I agree. I want to switch. Yeah, go ahead. Change directions. Go ahead, Because I got you. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't get online too often. Uh, yeah. I wanna, I wanna 